stop chasing women, especially to you young men out there. Okay, you guys in your upper teens or in your 20s, you have to understand something. This time that you have is precious. Okay, this time the world's going to tell you that you should be sowing your wild oats, that you should be getting all of this sexual experience, that you should be racking your notch count up. But none of that is true. None of that experience serves you. Chasing women that aren't go not going to be eventually your wife is a waste of time. And you're going to waste precious years of productivity, productivity, hustle, and work ethic where you should be putting all of your energy into chasing excellence. You have to understand, guys, that as men, we're born, obviously, with value in the eyes of God. But in the eyes of the world, we have no value. Okay? A woman is born with value because she has the potential for motherhood. She has, a, she has a womb that could give life onto this earth. And so she already goes through the initiation into femininity when she gets her period and she then can realistically have a viable pregnancy. See, the, the masculine initiation is lost, right? We're not born with any value. A man must build his value. And I see so many guys through their teens and then in their 20s in these roller coaster relationships, chasing women, going to clubs, going to parties, trying to rack their notch count up when you should be putting all of your energy into your life. So when you're in your 30s and 40s, you have a foundation to build upon. So when you finally meet a good woman and you settle down and have a family, you actually have something to work with. You should be chasing excellence, not women. Financial excellence, excellence regarding your fitness, your faith, you know, all of those things, your personal development. And I'm not saying you know, uh, fall victim to this hustle grind culture, bull crap. You know, everybody, you know, love, I listen, I personally love Alex Hermosi as well. And I apply a lot of his advice. A lot of guys are, you know, team, no sleep, all of this stuff. I am not an advocate for the Sigma, Sigma grind set, bro. But what I am an advocate for advocate of is not wasting your time through your twenties and in your teens, trying to get all the sexual experience, chasing women and in these useless relationships. Cause let me tell you as a man that's been there and done that firstly, there's nothing at the other side of that experience for you. Gaining all this sexual experience does not serve you later on in life. I don't care what the next best red pill guru says about that. There's nothing there. I have a wife and two daughters. When my, my wife and I engage in intimacy, do you think any of my experience prior to her serves that situation? It does not. No bedroom theatrics, nothing I can reflect back on. Oh, I'm going to use that move. None of that. Because intimacy within the container of marriage, first of all, that's exactly what it's for. We're not supposed to be having sex outside of marriage. That's a controversial topic, apparently, but that's the truth. But int intimacy within the context and container of marriage is the most fulfilling, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually gratifying experience a man could have when it comes to sex and sexual experience. So none of that racking up your notch counts, and I don't care how many sevens and eights and nines and tens uh, that you, you, you bring to the bedroom. It doesn't matter because it doesn't serve you in any kind of way. And instead, it actually makes you stray from your God-given path. The amount of time that I wasted in, in useless relationships in my 20s, and I still made pretty good through my 20s, but I just imagine if I just went through a period of intentional celibacy, giving my life to God and His command and not having sex out of, you know, outside of the container of marriage, my life would have probably been further ahead. And my life is more for, is further ahead compared to a lot of 30 year olds. Okay. I'm already ahead of the curve, but how much more ahead of the curve could I have been had I not smoked weed through my twenties, had I not chased women and was in roller coaster uh, relationships. I just think about all the wasted time, wasted days, wasted weeks and years and hours I spent on that when I could have been really pouring into my business more than I did pouring into my self-development, personal development more than I did, Pour, pouring into my faith more than I did, pouring into my fitness more than I did. There's nothing that exists on the other side of that, guys. And you have to understand, too, if you're a young man that's looking for a woman to court into marriage, by having sex with her, you're going to confuse the process. Not only are you dragging her into sin with you, and I've covered this in previous videos before, but you're not able to truly see who she is for who she is, okay? The amount of times that I saw glaring red flags in women that I was with before, but I made concessions for these red flags, meaning I overlooked them or I even tried to change their color. You can't change a red flag green, guys. Okay. But by getting in bed, and if she's particularly good in bed, or if you guys have this, you know, whatever sexual chemi chemistry, which really is just toxicity because you guys are both in sexual sin, 
you're going to overlook a lot of red flags. And this is why a lot of men end up in marriages that are less than fruitful in marriages that they're married to feminists or married to career women or married to women that don't want to have children or married to women that don't appreciate being a wife, mother, and homemaker. And even besides that, you're wasting your time. All that energy, if you went through a period of intentional celibacy, do you know how much power is in that? I know I'm not a huge fan of, of Nietzsche, but he talks about you know the sexual transmutation of energy and how you can take that intentional celibacy, not, no masturbation, no porn, no women, and pour that into your work and your personal development. I went through brief stints of that throughout my 20s, and it turbocharged those specific phases. I made more money, I got better in the gym, I got better mentally, spiritually, physically, all around, because I took that energy that I know it's, it, it's intense, man. Listen, I'm a guy with high testosterone, even as a 30-year-old man, so it, it feels like it's been no different. I know you're virile and you're, you're roaring to go. Having that temperance and self-control is a fruit of the spirit. And it's a skill that we all must hone as men is that self-control. If we just allow ourselves to indulge in what our bodies want to do, we're going to end up on the road of destruction pretty quickly. We'll end up drinking too much, doing drugs, having tons of sex because our bodies crave it. So if you get that little tingly feeling down, downstairs, guys, it doesn't rule over you. You don't have to go find a woman. You don't have to go, you know, watch porn, masturbate, any of those things, pour that energy into what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, that's fine. Because if you want clarity on what you want to do as a man or where your future is headed, your future trajectory, go through a period of intentional celibacy. My good buddy, David Hammond talks about monk mode. Now, I think in a lot of circles, this is probably overdone. But the way that he's, he, he, he talks about specifically to young men going through a period a brief period, a temporary period of monk mode is incredibly beneficial because that's where God gives you the most breakthrough, especially as a young man. You're channeling that energy into understanding where you want to be as a man, laying the foundational pillars for your life. So when you find a wife, you're able to use that as a platform. So in terms of fitness, faith, finances, the three Fs, every man should be focusing on those three things in his teens, in his 20s, of course, in his 30s and 40s and stuff too, but he's, you're in a different phase of life there. I'm a 30-year-old man with two young children and a wife and a mortgage and stuff like that. So my priorities have shifted a little bit, right? I have sort of the clarity of purpose and vision. And now I'm just executing upon, you know, uh, making that, you know, deeper. Um, the foundation is already there. So I'm just trying to create an even more prosperous future and vision for my family, leaving my children an inheritance, whatever that may be. It's not about me. It's about you right now. But in your teens and in your 20s, you're setting the foundation for the rest of your life. I said this to myself when I was 22 and I opened my gym. If I have nothing by the time that I'm 30 years old, it's my fault. And that's the attitude you should be approaching your 20s. It's a precious time. Pour into your personal self-development. Go through a phase of monk mode. Do not chase women. Chase excellence. Chase uh, future provision. Chase a better future. If I did not, you know, in the metaphorical sense, eat shit through my 20s in terms of finances, I didn't go blow money. That was the one thing I did correctly is I stacked my money away. I would not have been able to then buy a property, sell a property at a really good profit, build a house for my family, you know, you know, buy, buy cars in cash, buy my wife a ring, get married with no real financial constraint or worry because the money was there, it was ready to be deployed because I knew when I was 22, I want to have kids by the time I'm 28, 29, 30. And a week after my 28th birthday, my wife woke me up and said, hey, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Boom. All of a sudden, those years that I stashed that money away, those years that I kind of had that future in mind when was, my eyes were set on the horizon, all of a sudden, that money could be deployed in a meaningful way. You don't want to be 28, 29, 30, wake up and say, what the heck did I do with my life? You want to be able to set the foundational pillars for your life in your 20s. Stop chasing women. Chase excellence instead because the future self, that man that wants to be the father, husband, provider, leader over his home is going to appreciate the sacrifices that you made for him. Stop chasing women.